Now, as most of you know, I'm not a big fan of the uh, Yagi antenna in general. Um, on the uh, lower frequencies, um, on the ham radio setups, that sort of thing, they work really, really well. But uh, when you start getting up to uh, 2 gigahertz, they uh, are not that effective, especially over a long distance. They're quite good, you know, close up in a uh, medium range environment and a quite wide uh, angle there so they pick up uh, you know quite a few signals but over a distance they uh, drop off quite dramatically uh, you know once you go on beyond a certain stage so it's not that I don't actually like Yagi antennas as such it's just that to actually make one requires uh, quite a lot of effort and uh, you know the the tools to actually make it are sometimes quite specialized you know you'd, you you could make something like this if you had a drill press for instance so uh, i'm i'm just not a big fan of them i think uh, you know if you've got an afternoon spare and you want to build an antenna there are other antennas you could build that will outperform a uh, yagi but one of the builds quite a few people have asked me to make especially over the past year is uh, can i make a uh, yagi antenna for 5.8 gigahertz FPV. Now YARG is for the other frequencies for say uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and uh, 5.8 gigahertz for the FPV setup are uh, actually few and far between and the ones that you can actually find uh, tend to be printed circuit board type ones and they tend to be really expensive because they're made for the uh, you know the testing industry on uh, test setups that sort of thing they're not actually uh, designed to be used in uh, the uh, retail environment let's say so because so many people have asked me over the uh, past year or so can i actually build one i thought i'd sit down and uh, design one based on the uh, turbo tenor the uh, one that i did previously that ha only has five parasitic elements rather than making something as long as this so here is the uh, little 5.8 gigahertz yagi next to the uh, 2.4 gigahertz so you can get some idea of size comparison and uh, in this video i've actually come up with a couple of uh, different methods that should make it a lot easier to build one of these and get the uh, elements lined up nice and straight and all in line with each other so let's get the tools out and i'll show you how i actually made this little yagi so let's go over the measurements first then for this little uh, yagi antenna We've got the uh, back reflector, which is 24.5 millimeters long. And uh, we've actually got five parasitic elements and they're all 14.5 millimeters long. Now the distance from the back reflector to the first parasitic element is 19.5 millimeters. And then the rest of the parasitic elements are spaced out at 9.7 millimeters. And we're also going to have a driven element dead center in between the uh, back reflector and the uh, first parasitic element and the uh, main driven element is going to be a loop driven element again like the previous one and it's one full wavelength at uh, 5.8 gigahertz which is 51.7 millimeters now as for materials to build uh, this little yagi i'm going to be using some coat hanger wire again that's uh, three millimeters in diameter thick and I'm also going to be using a piece of wooden dowel as the uh, main boom and this is six millimeters in diameter and I'm going to be connecting it all up with this short pigtail of coax here with an SMA connector on the end. Now as for cutting out your elements using this wire you can actually mark off directly on the wire here the uh, different measurements that you're going to actually need the measurements for your reflector and then your little short parasitic elements but um, I, what I've actually done I've got this uh, tube in here this is um, a thicker tubing than a normal straw it's the uh, type of stuff that holds up party balloons and uh, what I've done I've just uh, measured and cut that off to the correct um, measurement there for this uh, back reflector here and you can actually just put that over the top of your wire like so put it up to the bottom there and then you can do your cut here so what you can actually do is get your dremel and just start your cut off to mark it and then remove that and then cut all the way around and then uh, sand off and uh, grind down the uh, edges nice and flat if uh, you use uh, a pair of wire cutters like these they tend to actually uh, go in at an angle on the on the cut and it's really really difficult to get it accurate when uh, you're dealing with measurements 
this small so use either a dremel with a uh, rotary cutting blade on or use a hacksaw blade so you can cut nice and straight so next we're going to mark off on the boom where the elements are going to be placed and we're going to cut out these gouges in the boom like you can see on this one that i've already done and uh, basically the elements are going to sit in those gouges and we're going to actually epoxy them in place now to cut out these grooves what i've actually used is this uh, little thin grinding uh, peg here that i have on my dremel tool and i've just gone along and actually ground it down so we get that indentation there you can also use a uh, drill bit try and find a drill bit with a similar diameter as the wire you're using you can use a drill bit and just use the side of it to actually cut down into that dowling it's quite a soft wood this so it's quite easy to do so to actually start me off i'm uh, leaving a 30 millimeter distance between the uh, start of the uh, dowling here and uh, where I'm actually going to be placing my uh, back reflector so I'm going to measure off 30 millimeters there and now what I'm going to do is measure 19.5 millimeters over in this direction from the back reflector and that's where our first parasitic element will be and now what I'm going to do is measure off the rest of the parasitic elements at uh, 9.7 millimeters spacing in between each other. Now to keep my cuts nice and level and uniform, as you can see, I've strapped it to a scrap piece of wood so the dowling can't move about at all. And I'm also going to raise it up when I do my cuts so it's more at my eye level so I can get each one of those cuts nice and flat and uh, each one will be nice and uniform with the next one so i've repositioned the camera so you can actually see me making these cuts so you get a better idea of what you actually need to do so i've raised it up with some uh, boxes here so it's more at my eye level and uh, i'm going to cut the uh, back reflector one out first So I've cut the groove out for the uh, first element, which is the reflector. And uh, so you can get a fair idea of how far down you need to go. I've got the uh, reflector here. So when I put it into that groove there, it wants to be flush on the top of the uh, beam itself here at the top. So if I put this other piece of dowling over there, you can see it's almost touching the top of that second dowling. So I've got my uh, dowling boom here ready to actually start attaching the uh, elements to. Now I'm going to attach them with some epoxy. Now if I did actually epoxy them in like this and have them sitting on top while the glue set, it uh, is next to near impossible to try and get these to all lay flat all uh, uniformly along that boom. You know because uh, we've cut out these grooves by hand so there's going to be errors there's also play in the boom itself as well. You can actually do it like this and just in those uh, last couple of minutes while the epoxy is just setting is give it a little twist. But uh, it's far easier to actually uh, add your epoxy directly into the indentations themselves and have your elements laying flat on the bench and then get your boom, turn it upside down and actually line up your elements that way and uh, have this laying flat and the bottom of your bench holding the actual elements in place that way you can uh, move them into position get them all nice and straight and uniform and then uh, leave it while it dries come back pick it up and all your elements will be attached to the uh, boom itself and then you can go along and put a little bit more epoxy on top just to make it really really strong so I've positioned my elements on the piece of wood using the boom and now I'm gently going to lift that off and hopefully it'll stay in that position and I've got my epoxy mixed up here and I'm just going to put a little bit of epoxy in each one of those grooves. So I've got a small amount of epoxy there now. You don't want to use too much because you don't want it to run down and actually end up gluing the uh, boom and the elements itself to the scrap piece of wood here. So I'll turn it over and reposition it. And then we can actually line up the elements nice and uniformly and leave it there to set and it'll be nice and straight across the boom itself. 
So the epoxy is set now and uh, actually laying it flat on the uh, bench like that is the best way that I've come up with to actually get them all uh, nice and even in rows. The uh, epoxy actually fills in any voids in those uh, grooves that you actually cut that uh, may be a little bit uneven so it just flows in there and because you've got the flatness of the bench keeping them all uniform along the top there and just straighten them all out and get them positioned directly in the middle it's just uh, much easier to actually do it that way so next we're going to make the uh, main driven element now i've got a uh, piece of copper wire here it's uh, 20 swg i actually purchased this so it's got the uh, enamel coating on so i've removed it from both ends so i can actually solder onto that and i've put a uh, couple of marks at uh, either end as well for a uh, quarter wavelength and a quarter wavelength here now the uh, full wavelength for this driven element at 5.8 gigahertz is 51.7 millimeters and uh, a quarter wavelength comes in at 12.9 millimeters so i've put the little marks there because i'm going to bend it around this cap here just like uh, actually making a uh, cloverleaf antenna and just the same method as uh, i use for making the uh, 2.4 gigahertz yagi so i'm carefully bending it around the cap to get a nice curve in place there and what i'm going to do now i'm going to get my pliers and just pinch these two quarter wavelengths in on themselves now because we're dealing with such uh, small measurements i actually measure off this quarter wavelength here and it starts where this little mark actually uh, sits so it's this side of the mark and the uh, the marker here you know you're dealing with such small measurements the marker leaves a mark of probably uh, one and a half millimeters there so be really careful i always make sure that i actually measure from this side of the uh, little mark on the uh, copper wire there so i'm going to get my needle nose pliers put it up to the edge of that uh, mark there and just bend it in on itself so we've got a shape like that and do the same on the other side So I've got a shape like that going on. I just want to bring these a little bit closer together now. And you want it so it's almost touching. There's probably a uh, three millimeter gap between the two ends there. So I'm gonna solder the main driven element onto the uh, coax now. And uh, what I like to do as well, you don't have to do this, but uh, this is some of the tubing from uh, those balloon stands. And uh, it makes it a much neater job if you uh, cut some of this off to length and you can stick it over your coax and actually uh, drizzle some super glue down inside there so it actually stays in place or if you uh, have actually got crimpers and you can crimp your own i actually uh, cut this off and i put it down into the crimp there and actually crimped it all up so it's in there it's quite solid held on by the crimp but it just makes uh, a much neater job along the beam so I've prepared my uh, coax here, stripped it back and I've tinned it with solder and uh, what I can do now is just tin up the driven element and actually solder it in place there onto that T shape and then cut away any of the uh, coax that we don't actually need when it's soldered in place. So I've got the driven element soldered in place there and I'm just going to get some wire cutters and trim away any of that excess solder just to tidy it up a little bit. And when you've cleaned the solder joints up, you want to go around and just visually inspect and make sure that none of that uh, outer braid there, for instance, is uh, shorting out to the other side because the gap there is so small between those two solder points, you could quite easily short it out. So just make sure that you haven't done that, otherwise it won't work properly. So I've put some heat shrink tubing around the end here to hold the SMA connector and the coax to the main boom. And uh, what I'm actually going to do now is get some epoxy putty and uh, build it up around this part of the main driven element just to hold it in that position permanently and also protect these two ends as well.
So the epoxy has set around that main driven element there and I've just got in with a Dremel tool and tidied the sides up, just squared them up a little bit just to make it a bit tidier. And I've also drizzled some epoxy in between that gap between uh, this top tube here and the main beam of the Yagi just to make it really secure. So what I'm going to do now is put a uh, coat of uh, acrylic paint on it and then it's finished. So the Yagi antennas are finished now, they've got the paint on, I think they look uh, kind of cute but uh, as most of my subscribers know I don't actually fly uh, quadcopters and uh, FPV etc but uh, I have uh, done a little test with these by putting a uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal through them and uh, you know they're quite a capable little antenna. So I hope that's uh, answered some of the questions on uh, some of the people who have been asking me to actually uh, build one of these uh, Yagi antennas for 5.8 gigahertz and you have a go at making one yourself if you do then uh, drop a comment below and uh, let us know how it actually got on and uh, if you've got any questions uh, regarding the materials and maybe different materials that you want to have a go at building one of these with then uh, you drop a comment below and I'll do my best to actually answer them so as always I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one